Welcome to Elevating La Cultura podcast, a space where I talk with Latinas who are passionate about what they do and are willing to share their passion with others to change the narrative, especially for the next generation. Each season is centered around different topics, but all with a Latina perspective. This is season six, and it's going to be featuring Latinas in the food space. I hope this season is inspiring and perhaps even nostalgic as we hear stories we can relate to. I'm so excited to share these stories and talk about food. So vamonos, and let's get into it. Hola, today I'm chatting with Brenda all about aguas frescas. She's building her business with her family, love, and lots of fruta. I hope you're inspired by our conversation. Hola, I am so excited to be back with a new season, and today I'm Excited to be talking with Brenda from Aguas Laguneras Incorporated. And I met her, um, was it maybe a few months ago in the summer when you were at an event and I tasted your Aguas Frescas and was just blown away by how amazing it was. And I just, I knew I wanted to get you on the podcast and have a conversation on how you started your business. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Brenda Gutierrez. Um, I started my business last year, um, but I wasn't proactive as I should have been. <laughs> I would have been bigger by now, I believe. Um, I started off with family and friends. And um, well, obviously, you know, they've been my number one supporters. I have like my number one fans and supporters and they know who they are. They know exactly who I'm referring to um, since I started. And um, I just cannot believe how fast my business took off this year once I put the time and effort into it. You know, family is an amazing like support system for like family is complicated, but they can be amazing in supporting a business. So that's amazing that that you have that. Why don't you go like t talk to us about how this started a year ago? I started in Aguas. And my so my son is a summer baby. His birthday is July 23rd. So for the past nine years, every birthday party, well, actually, because we just turned nine, um, every birthday party, I've always done Aguas. Instead of serving soda and, um, you know, other beverages, I've always made aguas frescas because that's what I grew up drinking when we were kids. You know, my mom would always make us aguas frescas and she's the one that obviously it's my inspiration as to why I make my aguas. And they are her recipes, even though I do tweak some of them and she doesn't like it. <laughs> but the customer's feedback is like, sorry, mom, everybody loves it. Like, I just don't you know, have to go with it. Um. So yeah, I've been making aguas frescas for my son's birthday party each summer. And everybody is just like, oh my God, where did you get these from? And I'm like, nowhere, I made them myself. And everybody's just like, they're so good. So um, last year, one of my husband's um, friend's daughter um, reached out to me if I can make her aguas for her daughter's first birthday. And she's always attended my son's birthday parties. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll make them for you. She's like, okay, I want um, una horchata con fresa and um, limon con pepino, which is my best sellers. So I was like, sure. She's like, how much? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Just bring me the ingredients and I'll make them for you. And then they were like, no, you have to charge me. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay because I just truly enjoy making them. So um, I made them and then the very next day, it was a Saturday and the very next day, she was like, everybody was asking me, where did I get them from? Because they were so good. And then I was like, oh, she said, can I give them your information? And at first I was hesitant. I was like, I would want my number for my hours, you know? So then she's like, you should, you should start your business. And she's actually a hairstylist. So she's like, you should start your business. And um, I was like, I told my husband and he's like, yeah, sure. Why not, babe? Your, your aguas are delicious. And my kids, you know, my support system is my husband and my kids, but my kids are my number one fan. So they're like, yes, mom, do it. So I opened the Facebook one and then the, the Instagram, I didn't open till a little bit after. 
So, um, but again, I wasn't as proactive as I am. So it was just family and friends. And I only had like maybe with family, maybe like 20 something followers. And then just word of mouth, my family and friends just started spreading the word and, you know, like, hey, you know, can you make me out one? So that was um, July 25th of last year. And then, well, you know, throughout the summer, they started booking me. And then I was like, oh, my God. But I was still a little shy and I will hold back, to be honest. So um, come here comes the holidays. And then everybody's like, you know, I want an hour for Thanksgiving. So there I was making hours for Thanksgiving, numerous orders. Even, you know, parents from my kids' school, family, like I said, family and friends. And then, you know, those relatives started, you know, it's all about social media. So once they started posting my awas on Snapchat and they're like, oh my God, where did you get that from? That looks good. And then that's when I was like, okay, well, I do have to open my social media and put myself out there. So I did. And, you know, that's how it began. And it's growing. (laughs) I think it's so like fascinating that it just takes that one person to like spark a whole business and it just takes that one person of saying like yes you should make this a business you can do it to like change everything yes definitely definitely i think it also takes like you being receptive and saying let's do this right like what were your thoughts like in the beginning so <clears throat> I mean, like I said, I held back so much and I, you know, I regret it now because I'm like, man, if I would have pushed myself harder last year when I first started, you know, I'm like, things would have been, you know, things are going very well. You know, I cannot complain, but I'm like, man, you know, like we would have been in all these festivals this summer, even though we were in a few festivals this summer, but I, you know, I I feel like if I would have put my, pushed myself more, I would have been, you know, at more. So, yeah, I mean, I just, it just took that one person to push me. And then um, another one of my friends, he's also a business owner. Um, he actually sells micheladas. And I told him. And he was like, you got to put yourself out there. And I'm like, no, you know, I would hold back a lot. He's like, you got to post on social media. Social media is your best friend when it comes to small businesses. So then I was like, okay. And he's like, He's like, I have a schedule from 1030 in the morning to like on. He's like, I start promoting my business on like our neighborhood um, Facebook page because we also live very close to each other. And he's like, I start posting as, as early as 1030 in the morning. He's like, you need to do the same. And I will hold back a lot. That was like I said, I started July of last year. And I did not put myself out there in social media till March of this year. And that was thanks to him. He was like, you got to put yourself out there. Like your business is not going to grow just with family and friends. Like use social media. Like it's at your fingertips, like use it. And I was like, you know what? He's right. I told my husband, I'm like, he's right. It is time consuming. I'm not going to lie because I am not only am I a, a mom and a wife, I'm also, I work full time. I work 40 plus hours a week. So I was like, okay, you know, once he told me, I told, you know, I told my husband, you know, I'm going to take what Junior told me. And then um, I started doing it. And just me posting, he told me, he's like, every day, share something about your business. And I will share it. And then he's like, and you're going to see how much you're going to grow because people are going to see it. They're going to share it. And then you're going to start growing from there. Sure enough. That's how it started. You know, I started sharing my social media on Facebook and Instagram, but actually my <clears throat> platform right now is Instagram. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I've just been sharing and I've been growing as I go. You know, one of them, one of my clients this summer, um, she was pregnant and she had her baby over the summer and she just saw my awas and she was like, oh my God, you know, it's my craving. Like I want your, I want to taste your awas. And I've never met her. She just tried my, um, she just saw my awas and wanted to try them. And she actually went, she booked me immediately after somebody shared my awas. She booked me without even trying them. She said, I need these at my baby shower. And I was like, wow, you know, it felt really good. You know, someone that hasn't tried your products, but just by the, by how it looks, she booked me. 
And um, she ended up surprising me at <clears throat> my pop-up in Berwyn, which is where we met Karina. Um, she showed up and she's like, hey, my name is Michelle. You know, and I was like, and then I, it just clicked right away. I'm like, wait. She's like, yeah, I really wanted to come out and try your aguas, even though, you know, for her baby shower, even though she already booked me. She tried them and then, you know, the look on her face, it was like, this is so good. You know, she was like, it's just, that's what makes, keeps me going. Seeing my customer's reaction to the first sip of my aguas. So, yeah, like I said, you know, that's how it started and that's how I'm going and I'm going to keep going because, you know, I have. I have people that I need to make proud, which is my, my kids and my husband and obviously my family. I know you said that you wish you would have started sooner or like been promoting yourself sooner, but I think we all, or a lot of us small business owners have that feeling that like, oh, especially once things start picking up, they're like, oh, I could be like over here, 10 steps farther if I would have just gotten over like my fear or my imposter syndrome but I also that's exactly yes but I also (laughs) think it's a really good time to work through that and to like like there's just so many people that have the similar story and I want to give encouragement that like you're not the only one that has felt that like we we all struggle and go through our own journey when we're trying to build but it's like once that breakthrough happens like it's a game changer and you can really take off it really is and like i said i had you know two people which is i'll name their businesses later on to give them a little shout out um I was not into pop-ups. That was like, I never saw myself doing a pop-up. And one of my friends who is a small business owner, she was like, shout out to La Vida Bella shop. She sells jewelry. She's the one that pushed me to do my very first pop-up. And it was the Berwyn one where we met Karina. And that was um, the Easter one, which was in April. And she's like, come on, they're looking for vendors. She's like, come on, bring your awas. And then I was like, oh my God, like, no, I'm not ready. You know, again, what you just described. I was like, no, I'm not ready. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, all you have to do, she's like, they set up the table. Shout out to beauty queens. Um, They set up the tables with your chairs. She's like, you just go set up. She's like, order a table cover off of Amazon, take your awas and serve them. And then I was like, oh my God, you know, so she pushed me and I signed up with Sandra for my pop-up. And I couldn't believe it. Like we sold out. My husband and my kids were like, oh my God, like we sold out for it, for it being our very first pop-up, we sold out. And it was just an incredible feeling. Like even to right now, I can't, it's just, I, it's hard to describe because it was just incredible. And just seeing people's reaction to taking the first sip of my agua is just, you know, it, it makes my heart full. It really does. And especially someone that suffers from, um, anxiety and depression, making the awas has really helped me. And I went to therapy last year and my, my therapist told me, he said, you need to find something, not a hobby. He said, you need to find something that makes you happy and that you love. <clears throat> Little did I know that it was going to be my awas because my kids and my husband already know. Once I put on my music and I'm in the kitchen and they're like, mom is making awas and they see how happy I am. And <clears throat> It truly makes me happy, like seeing people's reaction and, you know, like telling me the feedback of how good they are. It, you know, it's just a great feeling. Yeah, I remember the first time I took a sip of your awas and I was like, (laughs) this is the best horchata that I have ever tasted, like in the U.S. And (laughs) oh, my. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you. And mother's recipe. Mm, yes, I love that. And I would never change it. I would never change the recipe. That's my mother's. And everybody that tries it is like, oh my God, this is the best horchata. It really is. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. And you haven't tried my horchata con fresa. That one is good. And then I also launched the blueberry horchata. It's 
that one is also good because people are just, you know, they're hesitant to try it. But I had my comadre order and they loved it. And then I just launched right now the pumpkin spice of pepper. So you need to try it on my next pop. Next pop yes, for sure. That's like perfect for this season. Oh, and my other one that I forgot to just remember. I have the chocolate abuelita horchata. <gasps> so good. Oh, man. So I think there's a, <laughs> where does your inspiration come from when you're creating all of these recipes? <clears throat> just my husband. He's the one that he's like, okay, babe, you got to step it up. You know, you cannot just stick to your regular flavors, which is, you know, horchata, jamaica, limon con pepino, and, um, you know, the, the piña one, like the basic flavors. He said, we got to step it up. And then he's like always sending me ideas throughout the day. And he's like, look, you know, there's this flavor, there's that flavor. And, and then I'm like, oh, no. And like I said at the beginning of our interview, my awas are my mother's recipe. And and sometimes I do tweak them. And, she, you know, like I said, she doesn't agree because my mother is old school. And um, and once I tell my mom, she's like, Esas no son las aguas, you know, las originales. And I'm like, but mom, like, we gotta, we gotta step out of our comfort zone. Like, this is what they're doing in California, you know. This is, you know, this is what's hitting over there or in Texas. And then she's like, okay. And like I said, she's not very fond of it, but my customers love it. Like this summer, this summer, I launched the Jamaica con fresa. And let me tell you, people that don't like Jamaica are like, oh my God, this is so good. People that are like not too fond of the fresa, but they love Jamaica are like, oh my God, this is like the perfect combination of Jamaica with fresa or fresa with Jamaica. So, you know, like I said, my husband is the one that sends me ideas and throughout, you know, throughout the day. And then I'm um, also TikTok. Yeah. So do you do all of your marketing and social media? Yes. Yes. How do you balance your full-time job and this business? It's not easy. Let me tell you. But thankfully, um, my job, you know, once the pandemic hit, they send us home. And I'm very blessed and thankful that I'm, you know, I was able to stay at home and I work from home. So that's how I, you know, I'm able to have the time to promote my business, you know, during the day while I'm working. Yeah, I think it's um, a common conversation that I have with with small business owners, especially if we're like starting out, that social media takes up so much time and it's hard to balance the 40 hour work week with like your side hustle. Um, but also like community is so important during that time as well, because then we can talk and, and realize that we're not going through it alone, that it's not just us that's feeling overwhelmed. It's the reality of being overwhelmed with trying to do all of the things. It's not easy. And especially, you know, with my kids. You know, um, my daughter is 16 and my son is nine and they're both in extracurricular activities, you know, and it's not easy, let me tell you. But, you know, I having the drive, you make it work and you figure it out. Yeah, I think when something is so like important and pa like you're so passionate about it in like your your heart, then like you will make the time. And I, I think like, that's a beautiful thing about our culture is that we have the drive, like, it's like ingrained in us. We are determined. Yes. <clears throat> and we will get the support of family and we will like, figure out a way to make this work. If we don't know how to do something, like you said, like, let me ask my daughter how to do this social media thing or let me look it up online let me google it let me ask someone else let me go to this free workshop and we will figure it out and that's why I get so excited to talk about and to talk with other small business owners that are doing something that they're so passionate about 
because uh, they will make it happen. One way or another, we will make it happen. (laughs) Yes. And I think that's why it's so important to have that community of support when things are hard and it's not going as planned or you get stuck somewhere. Um, So has someone specifically been influential in your life as you are creating these recipes, wanting to share part of La Cultura with the world or like in building your business? Is there that one person that or a few people that have really been influential in your life? Oh my God, that would definitely be my 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 family, my mother. You know, she's the one that <clears throat> pushes me. And, you know, like when I started, like I was like, okay, it was just like an order here and there. And actually <clears throat> when I told my mom, about, you know, the feedback from that one party last year. She was like, you should do it, Mija. Your awas are, they taste just as good as mine. And I was like, for my mom to say that, that meant a lot to me because my mom is like, she's the best cook in the world, let me tell you that. Um, and she makes the most amazing agua. So when she said that to me, I was like, okay. And then she went and bought me my first two vitroleros for me to start my business, which is, you know, the containers, los vitroleros mexicanos. And, um, and that's how I started my business with just two. And, um, you know, last year I would be like, mom, I need your help. You know, trying to figure out, you know, us Mexicans, we do not have a recipe. We do not follow recipes that does not exist in the (laughs) Mexican culture. It's just (laughs) tanteale, ponle poquito until your ancestors tell you to stop. So I'll be like, mom, I don't know what are the measurements. So there comes my mom and, you know, we start doing it and she'll be, she'll be like, oh, le falta más azúcar, le falta más, um, más fruta or, <clears throat> you know, whatever she thinks that it needed. And then there we were, both of us jotting down the recipe, like the measurements for the three gallon and the five gallon um, aguas. So like I said, I it, it's my mother. And, you know, obviously my whole family, you know, my kids, my husband, my 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 father, my my siblings, everybody. And um, but my mom has been my backbone. And this summer, like I said, <clears throat> this summer I was I was not expecting to grow. And once I put myself out there in my neighborhood um page, and we are located in West Lawn, which we're close to Midway. Um, so yeah, that's where I started putting myself out there in March and I started getting booked, you know, like, Hey, you know, I saw your awas and I started promoting myself out there. I'm going back because I'm like, I just remember how I started. So everybody was like, people want to try your awas. Like they're not just going to order for you if they don't try them. So I started, I'm going to say like in May. Yes, it was around Cinco de Mayo. And I started at my neighborhood page. And I'm like, I'm going to be selling aguas en vaso this day at this time. I couldn't believe the amount of people that were responding to my post. And they would come and pick them up in my house. And I even went to the extent it's like, okay, well, I'm going to make deliveries. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be making deliveries. Place your order. And people were placing their order in my neighborhood. And there were me and my daughter. It was, it was not easy. Let me tell you, because we had a few orders that did spill in my car. So we had to come back and we do them. And, you know, I had to call my brother, be like, Hey, you know, Sergio, come help me. Like I spilled, you know, three, three hours and I need, I need to go back. And he's like, okay, what size? And I'll be like, yeah, I used to tell him the size. And he used to like, he, cause thankfully my parents live across the street. So he will walk over here. He's like, okay, I got, and he will like serve the aguas. And then me and my daughter would just come pick them up and then go back to deliver them. But once I did that, I did it a few times. And once they try them, the feedback and the, and the, and the request for my aguas started growing. Like it just, it just took off and I couldn't believe it. So when I started getting booked for parties, I didn't know um what i was putting myself into 
So for example, I started, once they started trying them, they were like, okay, well, I'm going to book you for June, you know, the first weekend of June and then the second weekend of June and then the third weekend and the fourth weekend without me realizing that it was graduation time. Let me tell you, for person that service from anxiety, I, I had a panic attack because I was like, oh my God, like the week off, I'm like, how am I going to do it? Like I started going through my notebook, my, my agenda, my planner. And then um, I started seeing the amount of orders I had. Karina, let me tell you that first Saturday of, Ju of June, I had 17 aguas that I had to make by myself. 17 aguas. And they were all for graduation parties. So then I was like, you know, who am I going to call my mom? So I call my mom I'm like, mom, she's like, don't worry, Misha. We got this. We're going to do this. My mom was my, she's my right hand. So here is me and my mom making all these aguas and we make them fresh. It's a fresh batch every time. Filter water. My aguas ingredients are just filter water, sugar, and food. Or, I mean, and unless it's horchata, obviously we use evaporated milk, rice, and cinnamon. But Yes, and it was so overwhelming that I was not expecting, you know, I wasn't expecting that at all. So, yeah, I mean, that was my story for the beginning of, of June. And then, like, the following weekend, I had another 15. And then the following weekend, I had 14. And here is me and my mom, just us two in my kitchen, making all these batches of aguas frescas. Yeah, as I hear your story, I'm just, I think about that you are filling a need that you might not have known was even there because you grew up with aguas frescas. Your mom made them. They were just always present. And yes. that's something that is missing in all of these parties that you're <laughs> serving and it's just so special for people to have that option at their event when before they might not have had that. It's just maybe like soda and water and beer. It's like, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's almost nostalgic because like when I was growing up in the suburbs, I didn't have easy access to horchata or good horchata. And so I would only have it when I was in, in Mexico visiting family or when I was in up in the city, like maybe little bits here and there. But to have that access is so special. And so you are providing that like sense of love, like even though like people might not realize it, like I see it as like you're providing that cultural love that that people desire and want and that's so beautiful it's it when I have horchata it makes me feel like I'm at home like it brings me peace it brings me joy like I feel loved and that's a reason that I wanted to do a whole season on like food and especially like cultural food because it's how we show love too like buy food and drink. Definitely. <clears throat> That's how my mother used to show us love when we were kids. She would not let us drink sodas. Soda was not allowed in her house. Um, she would, my mom, her love language is cooking. My mom loves to cook. So with that being said, um, every meal after school, we had always aguas frescas in you know, as far as back as even my kids asking me like, mom, you know, I'm like, this is all grandma used to make for us. Like we were not allowed to drink soda and we would have soda maybe like on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And it was just like um, a can of soda and me and my brother had to share it. <laughs> and now, you know, it's like, <clears throat> so it's like aguas frescas was so big in my childhood growing up. And now it's for my kids too. There, you would not find a soda in our house. Let me tell you, there's no sodas in our home. It's always aguas frescas. And um, I, I did want to put that out there. My aguas are vegan, except for the horchata. 
um, because I only use my mother never used white sugar because, you know, it's really bad for us. Um, but she would, my grandma, my gr grandmother would use um, azúcar morena, which is pure cane sugar. And that's what we grew up using. And that's what I use in my aguas. Until one of my friends was like, hey, you know, I think, what kind of sugar do you use? Do you use white sugar? Because she is vegan. She's another small business owner. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I don't use white sugar. I'm like, I'm Mexican. I'm like, we only use azúcar morena. And she's like, wait, so your aguas are vegan. And then I was like, huh. And then she's like, send me a picture of the sugar you use. And I send it to her. And then she's like, oh, my God. Like, you could have been at all the vegan festivals with me. You're, you know, the sugar that you use, it's vegan. So it is more pricey. And that's why, you know, my prices are a little not I'm not going to say I. I know the quality of the products that I offer. So, yes, um, I use, do use organic cane sugar, which is a little on the pricey side. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's. You know, my mom was my mom never allowed us to use drink soda because it was bad for us. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm the same way with my kids. Um, was there, is there a favorite food or drink that you remember? I know you said your mom made awas like all the time for you, but is there a certain food that really, uh, that, that used to be your favorite when you were a kid? And has that changed? Like, what's your favorite now? My favorite food, hmm. I know I'm I know this is gonna sound weird, but I as a kid I always loved caldo de pollo. My mom makes the best caldo de pollo. And um every time well my grandma, my grandma told my mom, every time we would go to Mexico, I would always my my I'm my I was my grandmother's first granddaughter. So I was very spoiled. So every time we would go to Mexico, she'd be like, Mija, ¿qué quieres? Que te haga de comer. You know, in Mexicans, you know, love language is by cooking. So she'd be like, ¿Qué quieres que te haga de comer? Oh, abuelita, quiero un caldo de pollo. And she'd be like, ay, hija, un caldo de pollo. I'm like, yes. She's like, ay, no, eso es para los enfermos. But I'm like, no, grandma, I just love caldo de pollo. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to say caldo de pollo. And then my favorite agua fresca is agua de melón. And surprisingly, my customers don't, request it hmm I wonder why did I don't because know. I've had like agua de melon is so good really yeah. refreshing and, and when I first started my pop-ups I did take agua de melon and um sometimes I used to bring it home but yes I mean I'm gonna say my favorite agua fresca is agua de melon so is there anything that you are excited about in this next season like new projects new recipes that you're working on, new events? Yes. La, La Casa Calderon is another small business and they sell um, guaraches from everything traditional in Mexico and her and her mother actually make like the shirts, you know, las blusas mexicanas, vestidos, todo eso. And I met her, well, I did come across her TikTok and it's um for Mercado del Sur, which is in Brighton Park. And that's actually where I grew up. And um, my ex and the reason how I found her TikTok was to my suegra. My suegra sent it to me. She's like, "Mira, um, you should sign up for this." And then um, I was like, "Okay." So I looked into it, and then I started following her on Instagram. And then I once you know she was looking for vendors. I'm like, "Hey, I would like to sign up for the Mercado del Sur." She's like, "Okay, come on over." And I signed up, and then we met. And um, we, I've been doing the Mercado del Sur since, I believe, June. June. And um, I'm there every first Sunday of the month. And then last month, she reached out to me. She's like, hey, you know, she's like, I wanted to ask you, invite you to help me co-host an event that she's doing for Dia de los Muertos, which is um, Conchas y Calaveras. And that's going to be on November 5th. So I'm helping La Casa Calderon co-host that. And um, so, yes, I'm very excited for that. And I hope you can join us, Karina. 
Yes, that is really exciting. I had Lissa on the podcast, I think season three, when she was talking about what she was doing. And I am actually working um, because I know, you know, November, I mean, now that fall is right around the corner. Um, not everyone is going to want aguas frescas if it's cold outside, right? I mean, there's some that do like me. I still have my aguas frescas and nice coffee in the winter, but not everyone. So I've been working with my mother. We've been working on making um, atoles. Um, I'm working on launching uh, champurrado and um, my delicious um, chocolate abuelita and um, canela. Oh my goodness. That is to keep us warm. Perfect. Yes. <clears throat> and then um I'm also doing um well I started um doing horchata iced coffee. Which oh. Everybody's so excited to try. Um I was gonna my first launch was gonna be at the at the Beauty Queens, um, which was the pop up for September, which was last Sunday, but it got postponed due to the weather. So, um, yes, I was supposed to launch the horchata, punk, pumpkin spice horchata coffee. <laughs> okay, so where will it be the next time you're you're gonna have have it available for people to? Yeah, so I I know the the next the next pop up where I'm gonna have it is with Mercado del Sur in Brighton Park. I know we talked a little bit about this at the beginning of our our talk, but. What are some past ideas or limiting beliefs that you have worked through the past, let's say, the, the past year that has um, really gotten you to the place that you are now? You know, my father, he's just so such a hard worker. You know, my dad has always, um, my mom has never worked. My mom is a stay-at-home mom, even though we're all pretty much grown. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my dad has always worked so hard all his life that I mean that's just what pushes me every day like the gender doesn't even matter like you know if men can do it so can we you know and you know that makes my dad very proud you know he's like wow the fact that I work full time you know I my family my husband my kids you know their extracurricular activities and I'm still running my small business you know so I'm gonna say you know just my father he's you know he's such a hard worker so as a Latina, has there been any past ideas that you have had to shift as you've grown from someone who makes AWAS for fun to now being a small business owner? Yes. I mean, like I said, it hasn't fully synced in. Um, last week, um, I saw one of my friends that moved away from Chicago. She moved to um, Missouri. And she came to visit, and we had not seen each other since last year. And she hugged me so tight, and she just looked at me in the face, and she said, I am so proud of you. Like, you're an entrepreneur. Like, I am so proud to say that you're my friend. And when she said that, I was like, I looked at her, and then I'm like, wow. Like, just hearing it, it meant a lot to me. And I never actually saw it that way. To me, it's just like... Because I just love making agua, so I don't see it much as a business. Because I just truly love and enjoy making the agua. So when she said that, I was like, wow, I am an entrepreneur. And my daughter always tells me. She reminds me all the time. And, like, I mean, I still can't believe that I'm here and where I'm at in my business. Yeah, I think I can definitely relate. And sometimes we are just going, going, going to the next thing that we get to this place of like uh, success. And we look back and we're just like, how did we get here? Because we're just so focused on the next thing. Yes, we're, we're working on the next step and what we're going to launch, you know, and uh, my husband told me, he's like, you know what? He's like, the Awas are great. Everybody loves them. He's like, but we cannot just stick just to Aguas. He's like, because we have to throw something else out there with the Aguas. So then um, my last my last pop-up, which was at the Midwest Music Festival in Summit, my husband was like, oh, you know, we're going to do um, 
my chicharrones with his famous um, puerito salad. And he's like, we're going to sell them. And then I'm like, okay. And I actually did not post it on my social media. I'm like, once people show up, they're going to see them. And you know, we're going to be like, hey, you know, we have chicharrones preparados. So my husband's idea was um, in the bag, the chicharrones de ruedita and his famous um, um, ensalada de cueritos, which those that know me know how good it is because <laughs> um, we always have it at my, you know, my gatherings and they're like, oh, my God, this ensalada is so good. So that's my husband's, um, which is it consists of repollo, tomate, um, cilantro and cueritos. So at the last pop up, we were like, we have, you know, chicharrones, you know, with just limon and valentina. And then we were like, and we have the preparados. But his like, concept was, let's do it in a bag so people can eat off of it with their fork, you know, out of the bag. And oh my God, we sold out. I'm going to say within like the first hour and a half. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, I said, like how you just said right now, you know, like it's, it's hard because you're already like, you're working on what's the next step. What are we going to launch next? What are we going to, you know, what we're working on? So we have tons of ideas for the next, you know, for next year. And I can't wait. I'm so excited, you know, for you guys to see all of that. Um, you know, like I said, you know, my husband, it's, you know, he's the one we He's the one behind the scenes with like all his, the creativity and the ideas. And, you know, obviously I'm the one that ex executes those ideas <laughs> with the aguas and the flavors. And, you know, we have a lot that we've been working on and we cannot wait for next year. Yes. Yes. I always try to post or repost when pop-ups are happening on Instagram. So if you're listening, look out for that. Um, well, as we wrap up, I want to, I ask all of my guests, what is some encouragement or advice that you have for the next generation? <clears throat> wow. Um, I'm going to say, follow your dreams. Definitely follow your dreams. Um, don't give up. It's not easy, but just keep pushing. And just, again, don't give up. Just keep pushing through it. You know, it's not easy. Like I said, um, you know, I've had, you know, pop-ups and I had one where, um, I will never forget this one. And it was in Oak Lawn and, um, I was very, I'm not going to say upset. I was just like, I felt it was my, it was my second pop-up. To be honest with you, it was my second pop up and um, coming from Beauty Queens, which is the Berwyn one from selling out and then going to this one. I was kind of I came home with most of the containers halfway. So I was like out because the first one I sold out. So it was such a good feeling. And then um, it did put me down a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And then I was like, my husband was like, no, you know, don't be upset. It's okay. You know, we're just getting started, babe. We're just getting started. Keep pushing. And I am so glad I did because look at me now, like the fact that we were invited to the, um, we were invited to an event in Rockford. That was my very first big event. And I was not expecting that turnout. Let me tell you, Karina, um, we were setting up, we got there, it, we were stuck in traffic, so we were running a little late, and um, we got there, we set up. We did not even finish setting up, Karina, when the line, there was a line already for my awas, and oh my God, it was just, I was overwhelmed, I'm not going to lie, and um, we sold out, and People kept like, you know, following me on social media. You know, that was my very first big event. Huge. And we've made more than we ever thought we could make in one day. Um, so, yeah, like I said, follow your dreams and don't give up. And even from there, you just see exposure from pop-ups and, you know, people sharing me on social media. You know, 
to us making it like I would have never thought that from last year from just starting with family and friends to this year, you know, doing that big event um in Rockford and then the My House Fest in Pilsen. Like the fact that we were in Pilsen, like I still I I'm I still can't believe it. And I should be very proud of myself. My kids are, you know, um at the at the pop up that we met, where was the shark there when you were there? No. No? Okay. So the shark tank was introduced this year, and that was my husband's idea. Like I said, he's the one that's like, babe, we gotta step it up. We gotta, you know, we gotta, you know, step out of our comfort zone, not just I was like I was fresca. So he came up with the idea of the shark tank, which is one of our dreams, which is our blue raspberry lemonade with fresh squeezed lemons. Maybe it was. Yes. And um my daughter, I took my daughter to the Bad Bunny concert in March and she wanted a shark costume. So the shark costume has been sitting in her house since March. And my husband's like, babe, we're gonna promote the shark tank with the shark costume. And sure enough, people know this, that we are known for the shark costume. <laughs> so people look forward to, you know, seeing us at pop-ups. And, you know, I start promoting. They're like, hey, you know, we're going to be here. Come take pictures with the shark. And the shark, um, it's not just one person. My kids take turns in it. Sometimes my son wants to be the shark. So if you see the little short shark, that's my son. Sometimes it's my daughter. Sometimes it's my little brother. And sometimes it's my nephew, Eman. Um, so, yeah. So I just follow your dreams, guys. Follow your dreams because I never in a million years thought that I would be where I'm at now. You know, being at the events that I was in this summer and, you know, now with um, Liz inviting me to co help her co-host um, Conchas y Calaveras, which to me is like, wow, you know, I never expected this in a million years. I love it. I'm so thankful for your time. I'm thankful that you... We're so willing to share your story and give encouragement and share your wisdom on, on all your business endeavors, share your journey. I am so thankful. Can you tell people where they can find you on social media, website, all, all the places? So you can find us on Facebook and Instagram under Aguas Laguneras. And um, my, my, my information is under my phone number. Or via email, which is aguaslaguneras at gmail.com. Uh, my phone number, um, should I say it? Yes, right? So people can <laughs> call me or text me. Um, it's 773-791-2572. Then there's a text or a call, and you know, we'll we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But the first best features is through social media, and that will be Facebook or Instagram. Perfect. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for, you know, it's such an honor. And, and, and when you invited me to this podcast, I couldn't even believe it. You know, my daughter was like, mom, I'm so proud of you. So yeah. Thank you, Karina. Thank you for this opportunity. All right. Well, we will see each other soon. I'm going to have some awas at your next event. <laughs> I will hire you from one of my events and everyone should to try to find you and taste your taste your awas because they are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. We will see each other later. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. She's doing amazing getting out there and sharing her love of making awas. I love how community has shown up and supported. Be sure to follow so you can see where she will be for her next pop-up because you for sure need to taste her awas. They're so good. Okay, amigos, thank you so much for listening. There'll be a new episode every Tuesday, so after you listen, feel free to take a screenshot and post on Instagram and tag at Elevating La Cultura. You can also comment on our YouTube video if you're watching online. I always love to hear from people and how they resonate with the stories that I share. So leave a review on Apple Podcasts so we can get more ears listening to these stories and we can continue Elevating La Cultura. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening. Y nos vemos next week. Bye.